What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Matthew Putterman. I am back with Life of a Prize Fighter. I am joined by one of my one of the really good fighters that's out here right now. His name is Cody Lin. He's the current APFC interim flyweight champion. Cody, how you doing today, man? Good. How about yourself? I'm good, brother. I'm good. Thank you. Hey, so I want to talk a little bit about your performance at uh, the last APFC. Um, you are the new interim champion. Uh, how do you feel that 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 fight went for you? Um, it obviously went good. You know, I got the finish, which I'm happy with. I'm actually happy that I got the three rounds of experience and then the finish at the end. That's kind of you know like a cherry on top, because I I'm really looking for getting as much experience in the cage as I can before I make that next jump. So I'm happy it went that way. Um, overall uh, performance though, there's a lot I learned for sure and a lot I have to adjust and fix. Um, I feel like personally I gave him too much credit on his striking because uh, the fights I was watching before, obviously studying him, I've seen better striking, more dynamic. He seemed faster, more angles. And then when I got in there, he wasn't really like moving or any way through his kicks. Um, I could see him come in pretty easy. So in my eyes, like I was looking to strike with him, but then getting in there, you know, game plan changed. I felt like more comfortable almost wrestling with him, which I was the strongest point. And, uh, Honestly, wrestling with him, grappling with him, I, I felt calm because I kept going back to that. And then uh, we made the adjustments because I was hunting for the submission for the finish uh, almost too much, giving up position. So then second round, third round started to kind of slow it down and, and looking more for the openings and just trying to go for something. Definitely. That led me into the question is, what do you think you could have worked on, especially during this this fight? I mean, your grappling looked very good, um, and even on the feet, too. You looked uh, really good as well, but yeah, when you when you were talking about okay, what do I need to fix? Is there something that you would have been like anything in the fight where you just been like, man, I should have done this, and it would have came out, I would have got the finish quicker, or how how do you think that was? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is not rushing too much for the finish, more controlling yeah. position. Even if like I didn't get the finish right away, I feel like I could have made the fight cleaner by just maintaining my positions longer. Um, cause from the fights I watched, I seen he start, he, he starts fast and starts slowing down. So I just maintained those positions first, second round. I feel like I could have made the fight look a lot cleaner. Cause I'm, I mean, obviously everybody, you're always looking to do like a perfect performance, you know? Yeah. So is that going to happen realistically? No. But like every time I go in there, I'm trying to do the best I can to make it look as easy as I can, you know? Mm. So yeah, I think the biggest adjustment I'm going to make from this point on is just controlling position more, slowing it down, really trying to control my part or my opponent than trying to just finish them right away necessarily. Yes, I'm looking for the finish, but I don't want to rush it and lose position like I did in this fight. For sure. For sure. No, that's understandable. And my question is to you, you know, you are the interim champion and are you looking to unify the titles here or are you looking for even different options if you, you know, get the call? Are you are you looking to go to the UFC specifically or if you know the PFL now, just to claim Bellator, or what? What do you What are you thinking about that? Um, for the next step, I do want to fight for PFC and like really solidify the, the belt. You know, whether uh, Immortal Lois kind of goes to UFC because again, we don't know what his his plan is right now. And then yeah. like the belt and like solidify me as the champ. I still want to defend it or just again like fight for it again, like really make it mine. Either way, I want at least one more with APFC. Um, but honestly, game plan, like, I, I want to go UFC. Like, that's that's my ultimate goal. Uh, yeah. But obviously, EFL has so many calls, and it's a good deal. Like, we're not going to skip over it. So, but the end goal always is UFC. How soon we're going to go, we do want a couple more fights, to be honest. Me and my coaches, um, we're kind of talking about trying to figure the game plan out from this point on. But we, we want more experience, right? We don't want to jump. Like, if UFC calls right now, we're probably going to say no, honestly. Um because we want to make sure, we don't want to just get there and like, oh, I'm in the UFC. We want to get there and make our run, right? So we want to make sure we have the experience we need to get there and stay there. So maybe one more year, a couple more fights kind of depends. We'll see. But I'm not in any rush right now. Definitely. You know, by watching, I've gotten to see your past two fights live as I was working for the APFC. What have you, like looking at your game, what is something that you could like improve on the most in your overall MMA game? Is it something to do with your jiu-jitsu, something to do with your striking? What what would be your something that you're like, man, I need to work on this, then I'll be more successful here? 
Um, I think overall it will be my striking confidence, to be honest. So I feel I have good striking. Obviously, like the flying knee, you know, I have that striking. I just feel like when I get in there, I have to be more confident and use it more. I use a lot of my striking, obviously, get inside, wrestle, take them down, grapple. Um, but in the training room, I'm just as confident with my striking. I have to just bring that out when I'm actually in the fight itself. Mm-hmm. No, that, that makes sense for sure. You know, I see you train at, obviously, you train at Rothwell with Ben with Ben Rothwell and a few guys like that. And then you're also cross-training over at Valley Flow Striking. Uh, I know they have Bilal Muhammad, Yaya Rodriguez, and a bunch of good guys over there as well. What does that mean to you, and how, how have they helped you improve your game? They've helped me improve a lot. You know, it's just the the higher-level guys. And then especially Bilal, when I first got there, he was the, the main wrestling coach, I'd say, like on, on Tuesdays when, when I go there for the wrestling. And, like, just his MMA knowledge with his wrestling knowledge put together, it's different, you know, because a lot of people go, like, just wrestling coaches and, like, they don't necessarily know how to transition wrestling to MMA, but he has the experience already. So, like, getting coached by him helped my game a lot with the wrestling, especially defense, like, on the cage and stuff. That's one thing I was really happy with this fight is my wrestling defense and especially on the cage. Because some you see my past fights, I struggled with a little bit, you know, getting held against the cage. Um, but, like, this fight I felt confident everywhere, you know. Um, but Mike Valley, all of them over there, and Carl Hernandez, he's fighting this weekend. Like, he's my main training partner, like, they all help me so much, and I feel like I've been improving dramatically in the last year just being with them. Definitely. You know, you only have, I looked at your record, you only have one loss on your record for your professional career so far. I ask fighters this question all the time. Every fighter, I've gotten to speak with Roy Jones Jr. and every couple guys, like, high up to just kind of pick their brain and see what their thoughts are, you know, what motivates you more coming off of a loss or coming off of a win? Cause you're on a high right now where you just won the interim belt, like about to probably unify the title or, you know, when it's a loss, you're like, man, I just get more hungry to want to do better. Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like I find motivation from both. I would say, um, I feel like I'm one of those guys that always try and learn from a fight and I don't, I don't try to celebrate it too much, you know, like even like Ben, my coach, he tries to make sure I do enjoy like a little bit after my wins, you know, but like for me, it's yeah. like, I always want to try and improve, improve right away. Like, again, I'm always looking for that perfect performance. If I see the fight, which again, it's never been perfect, but I look at the fight and I see, oh, I did that wrong and this wrong. I always want to fix those things and make those things better every single time. And then same with the loss, you know, it's like, obviously you lost, you made a lot of mistakes. So there might yeah. be more, more but it's motivating because now you lost, you feel down, you want to get that high back where you get the, you know, so both ways, I feel like I, I take well, obviously I winning's better, right? You know, losing sucks, but I feel like motivation in both. And I learn from both about, about the same amount, to be honest. I always try and look for my mistakes no matter what. For sure. You know, I see that you're also from Kenosha. Were you born and raised there or? I, I just train with Ben now in Kenosha. Um, I still I live in Zion. I was born and raised in Zion. Okay. Yeah, nice. So I saw that actually Cade side, I don't know if you are friends with him. Um, his name is Tristan Jass. Are yeah, you yeah. familiar with T Jass? Mm-hmm. I saw him, Cade side. Are you guys friends at all or are you guys just uh, know each other? We recently just started uh, talking. So he actually came to Rothwell to do like, cause he went to uh, went one of the fights and he came to Rothwell and then he was, did like this week, like video vlog thing of him training, like boxing, like from day one to day seven, you know, recording it. And then uh, obviously I seen him, I talked to him at Rothwell and then in one of the, the scenes in the video, we were sparring. So then obviously sparring, you know, after that we talked more and just him being there for the week, we just kept communicating and talking and then, talked to him a little bit over Instagram and all of that and he said he's gonna try and make the fight and all this and that and he actually made it because I think he flew in from like Vegas like the night before or something you know yeah. it, but he, he made it which is really cool but yeah we've been we've been talking off and on he's he, you know he's a cool guy for sure I, I really appreciate him making it out yeah no for sure and for the people that don't know who Tristan Jass is he's actually a, a famous YouTuber that does a lot of basketball tricks and 
uh, there's a lot of the like the five on five court basketball stuff, but that's who uh, Tristan Jass is. Really, I got to meet him at the fights. He's a very nice individual. So uh, shout out to T Jass, <laughs> Kenosha native, right, brother? Yeah, he's super humble, man. He's really, yeah. you know, you never know until you, until you talk to them, you know, like so. And he he's really famous. He's up there, you know. So yeah. you never really know what they're about till you talk to him. When I talked to him, I just knew like he's. He's really humble down to earth. He really respects everybody, you know. He doesn't overlook on anybody. For sure. And and it's the same it's the same thing. Like just cuz he's at that stature, he knows what it was like when he was at that level. So that's yeah. uh when I got to meet him, he was very very humble about that. You could just tell like his demeanor from the top there. But um but my question, my next question is to you, your what is your end goal here for MMA? Is it being the world champion? Is it being the best pound for pound fighter? Is it making, you know, a lot of money? You know, everyone's got their definition of being a prize fighter. What is your definition here of what you want to do for your career? Uh, my end goal is obviously UFC's number on my list right now. But the very end goal is I want to be champion. And with that coming, once I become champion I find, and I get that goal, you know, UFC champion, I know more are going to open up, right? So it's never, it's never going to end. So then being pound for pound, you know. And then when I'm pound for pound, and then it's like, all right, now – I can focus more on, okay, I, I, I did what I wanted. Let's focus more on, okay, how can I make the most money I can? Obviously, leading up to that, we're always focusing on trying to do our best to make the most money we can to actually make this a living, you know. But I would say my end goal is pound for pound because every time I set a goal, I reach the goal, you got to always up it. If you ever just are satisfied, obviously, that, that's going to be the end of it. You're not going any further. So you always got to keep making sure you set new goals once you reach the ones you have already. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's talk a little bit, you know, outside of fighting, you know, that's your life in general. (laughs) But let's talk a little bit outside. What do you like to do? Like, what are some of your other hobbies besides, uh, obviously, training, working out almost every day, I'm sure. Uh, What are some things you like to do outside of training? Uh, That's training, yeah, training, but that's like (laughs) nine stuff. Like, um, honestly, so I I try to hang out with my friends, my family, mostly. I don't really play video games like a lot of people do anymore. Like I used to, but like this has just taken over my life so much, and like I'm grateful for that like this this is what I want to do. Like, and like the only time I really do things is like when my girlfriend's like we should do this, and like I know it's not good, but it's like my mind just always on this. I'm not thinking about other things, you know. So I do my best to just you know spend the time I have, especially after fights, my friends, my family, all that, and give back to them, you know, because like I spend so much time when I'm in camp just focus mainly on the fight you know that's all I think about I wake up so I'm thinking about I'm going to sleep that's what I'm thinking about so honestly the only thing I do besides training and fighting is probably just trying to find time to to give back to my friends and family for sure no that's awesome man sometimes you it's it's nice that you're like get that switch where you're on all the time like I'm ready to compete here or uh, I don't want to go watch this fight but man it's 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 humble for you even to say that you just take time away and just hang out with, like you said, your girlfriend or anything like that, and just kind of get your mind off it a li- little bit, for sure. I, I'm sure that eases your mind a little bit, for sure. Yeah, 100%. But, what I'm working on right now is, like, just trying to try and take a little bit of time and just, obviously, I'm still training, but with no fight schedule, it kind of takes the stress away and just trying to now invest the time I would in fighting, invest a little more into my family, things like that. Definitely, definitely. All right, brother. Well, I appreciate you joining me today, man. I appreciate it. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and shout out some of your like your social media platforms so we can let everyone know where to follow you. And uh, go right ahead, man. The floor is yours. For sure. Um, Instagram, it's Codebreaker MMA. Uh, Facebook, Codebreaker 2 or Cody Lynn. That's main two platforms I use right now. But yeah, I appreciate you having me on. I, I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Yes, sir. Well, this is Matthew Putterman signing out with Life of a Prize Fighter. This is with Cody Lynn, the current APFC interim flyweight champion, and we are signing out today. I hope you have a great day and stay blessed.